Hey everyone. Um, so I'm, I'm making another one of these videos. I'm deciding to do this just to kind of update things. I made one of these videos a few years back uh, with some uh, backpacking checklist video for people to, to watch before going out for the first time. Um, but I've taken several trips since then, uh, learned a lot, uh, had, you know, different experiences, different places. And uh, I get asked a lot with, you know, sometimes it's hard to find people to backpack with, at least for me. Um, I do have some guys that kind of tend to go with me pretty regular, but, you know, sometimes they're not available. And so get new people interested and that's always great. Um, but if they've never done it before, uh, oftentimes they're not completely sure <coughs> uh, what to bring. So I feel like this helps a little bit. Um, make this, I have it printed out as well. I'll try and put a link uh, at the bottom of the video to uh, download a printable list as well. But as I go through this, I'll kind of just give you some of my experiences as well. And I'll try not to make it too long and, and bore you to death, but hopefully it's some good information and uh, everybody gets something out of it. And again, so I just want to say that this is, uh, this is my personal preference. This is the way that I like to, to hike and, and do things. Um, there's certainly, you know, different ways of doing it. Everybody has their own style. And so feel free to adjust, modify, do things the way that's comfortable for you. Um, but this will, if you've never done it before, or you're just looking for some extra tips and input or something like that, then hopefully this helps. So uh, I'll get right into it. Um, we'll start with the, the must-haves. So if you're looking to, to get out there and, and get out in nature and explore uh, the things you must have, first and foremost, um, obviously you need a backpack. Uh, you're not going to go backpacking without a backpack, really. Um, and I'm not an ultralight guy. That's, a, that's, some, that's for a different video, and I'm sure there's people more experience than me when it comes to that but this is for standard backpacking my trip lengths are usually three to five days so that's that's what i'm basing most everything on um my backpack is a pretty good one uh it's it's but uh, you know what, whatever you get is is good i i like stuff that i can hang things off of um it's size adjustable it can you know I, i've got it all set now after so many trips to, to fit my frame pretty well and I'm familiar with all the pockets and everything, but obviously you need a backpack and I'll let you guys handle that one on your own. Um, the next thing you have to have, well, I guess you don't have to have it. Some people don't. Um, I've seen people go without, but uh, shelter, some sort of shelter, whether it's a, a tarp or a tent or however you want to do it. I do bring a tent. I have, this is my tent. Uh, it's just a little one man mountaineering tent. Um, I like it. I've used it multiple times now and it's, it's always good. I'm not, by the way, you'll notice right now, I've got some clothes here that are just kind of thrown here. My tent's all folded up nicely. I, I'm i not a fold my tent every morning kind of person. So when I put things away at the end of the trip, uh, I clean it out, I wrap it all nice, I put it back in the bag and I'll take it with me like this. But I'm, I, I pack stuff, everything. Um, so when I set up my tent for the first time the next morning, I take things and I just shove it in the bottom of my bag. It's only going to be in there for a few hours till I get to my next campsite or however long it takes. And then I'm just going to take it right back out again. And so for me, I do the same with my sleeping bag. I, I don't bother to roll it up nice. I, I shove everything in my pack and it works fine. I don't care if it gets a little wrinkled. Um, so sleeping bag, obviously something else you got to have. I wouldn't recommend going too cheap on a sleeping bag. Uh, the reason being is the more expensive ones are tend to be the ones that are, are lightweight and uh, collapsible. So this is mine uh, from REI. It's this big now, but when I shove it down in my pack, it, it goes down to almost nothing. And uh, I think it's rated to 30 degrees or something like that. But whatever you get, make sure it's appropriate for where you're going. Um, obviously, that's important. Um, the cheaper bags, again, are going to be, you know, not probably not collapse quite as much be a little heavier maybe um, something else with with a tent that I've learned is depending on where you go so I, I just bought these I haven't used them but they're like the super lightweight they basically don't weigh anything these tent stakes they have no weight to them at all uh, but some places where you go it's not even worth bringing in my opinion um, I, I backpacked the Grand Canyon uh, like a rim to rim trip on the Grand Canyon and, and it's worthless there's no reason to bring these it's just rock everywhere um, 
So you can't drive these into the ground anyways. Uh, I, I wouldn't even bother if, if you're hiking somewhere like that. Um, you know, throw your bag in it, put some weight, and unless you're going somewhere real windy, you're, you're probably be fine. Um, another thing you gotta have is a good pair of boots. Um, I, I've gone the gauntlet on these things. I've gone everywhere from, I have a real expensive pair of Solomons here. You can see they're beat up and dirty now. They've been on a lot of trips, a lot of miles on these things. Uh, but to tell you the truth, they're a little much for me. I, I don't, I don't care for them actually all that much. They're great ankle support. They're waterproof, Cortex and all that good stuff. They're a little bulky though, a little heavy. Um, and then I've gone the real cheap route too. I've gone and, and hiked in just a cheap pair of boots and, and that's also not good for obvious reasons. So I got a new pair of, I bought Merrell's this time because I've just heard really good things about them. So I'm going to give those a shot on this next trip. I'm, I'm going out again in a few weeks. And so that's sort of what sparked this as well is I, I'm starting to lay out all my gear in, in preparation of that. Um, but along with boots, I also bring sandals. I, I like hiking in sandals. It's comfortable. If you come to water, you just get in the water, get your feet wet, cool down. Um, I used to hike a lot. I would bring these, these like kind of hiking sandals like this and go around the back of your ankle. I actually just found a pair of hiking sandals with good tread on the bottom that are like flip-flops and I'm going to take these this time and try them out and I like it. I would recommend bringing sandals. Um, my personal preference is they're nice to have. Um, so the only other thing that you really like have to have, uh, it's kind of a necessity, at least in my mind it is, is a map. Uh, at least one person in your party should have a map. Don't underestimate it. Don't go without one. It's, it's, not, it's just not worth it. Um, they're usually free. Um, it doesn't weigh anything. It's, it's, there's no reason not to bring one. Um, that being said, I don't generally bring a compass with me, but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea to. Um, I'm, not, I'm not advocating for people not bringing a, co a compass. I just, for whatever reason, I tend to not to. Um, I'll talk about clothes for a minute now. Uh, I'm not gonna get too crazy heavy into the clothes thing. I mean, it's clothes, everybody knows what you need to wear. I don't bring a ton of clothes. Um, for a three or four or five day trip, like one pair of shorts and one pair of pants. My pants are the convertible ones that zip off, but I think maybe one time I've actually done that. I, I have a pair of shorts that I'll bring and uh, actual regular shorts and a pair of hiking pants, one pair of hiking pants and then maybe a couple shirts, uh, a tank top, a, long, a short sleeve shirt. But I also do have, I have thermal underwear here that's long sleeve pants, long sleeve shirt, real lightweight, but really warm. Layers are good. Layers are your friend. You can take layers off. You can add layers on without, you know, getting crazy, but it's not fun being cold. So even if you're going somewhere that's warm, uh, there's, there's not a lot of places that don't get at least somewhat chilly at night, in, at least in my experience. So if you're not going to bring a bunch of layers or, or some warm clothes and just be real sure that, that you're going somewhere, it's not going to get cold because it's like I said, it's no fun. Um, I also bring some kind of a bandana with me. Um, not both. One's, this one's a bandana, regular bandana, and this one's like one of those ones you pull over your face. Uh, they're they're nice for a number of reasons, though. You know, if you gotta wrap something up or put it over your face, keep bugs off your face, or you know, just wipe the sweat off. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons. I I rec recommend carrying a bandana. Sometimes I'll stick it in my back pocket just to make me easy to see to everybody if we're in a weird area or something. Um, I recommend bringing a hat of some kind, again, for me, depending on where I'm going. I have a, this, you know, floppy little thing that keeps good sun, sun protection, keeps the sun off me, off my neck and my ears and stuff like that. And, uh, I also, if I'm going somewhere cold, I've got one of these. I like it, actually. It's, it's comfortable. It's comfortable and it's very warm. Um, and it doesn't weigh anything. It's what you always want, so. I bring that with me too for cold places, um, as well as a pair of gloves. Uh, I have big hands, finding good gloves is not always the easiest thing to do, but I found a nice pair, I bring those. Um, what else with, with clothes can I tell you? Uh, as far as, you know, some nice, you know, I don't skip on socks, that's one thing I don't skip on, I bring plenty of socks, my breathable socks. Um, underwear, don't, don't wear boxer shorts. Get 
tight fitting underwear, even if you don't like them necessarily all the time, just take my word for it. Boxer shorts are not the way to go uh, when you're out hiking a bunch of miles. So, um, for sun protection, back to sun protection. Obviously, bring a pair of sunglasses, even if you're not really a sunglass person. If you get, you know, bad reflection off water, depending on where you're at or something, just I would strongly recommend bringing sunglasses as well. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it for for clothing wise. Uh, again, it's not I don't don't no no reason to get carried away with it. You're not trying to impress anybody with your your style or anything. So. Uh, that's not the idea. Um, but with sun protection, there's a few other things that go along with that besides just clothing and um, sunscreen, obviously. So everything I bring is little tiny bottles. So I'll bring a little bottle of sunscreen. Uh, always bring that. I apply it all the time because you definitely don't want a sunburn. Uh, nobody wants that. That's no fun. Um, chapstick, too. I bring chapstick all the time. I use a lot of chapstick, just the way I am. Uh, some of them, like this one, actually have sun protection in the chapstick too. That's nice. Um, so I, I definitely bring those. Always bring those. Um, a sleeping pad, uh, especially in cold weather areas. If you're going somewhere cold, uh, you really want a sleeping pad just to keep that la layer of air in between you and the ground. Uh, get you off the dirt. Um, and they're comfortable. It's more comfortable than sleeping on rocks. So. Um, I, I definitely recommend getting a sleeping bag. I keep mine. I strap a lot of stuff to the uh, the outside of my pack. By the way, uh, right now I, I have my sleeping my sleeping pad that usually stays here strapped to my pack. Uh, and so you see, I got carabiners all over the place because the, that's what they're for. I just hanging stuff off my bag. Uh, my my metal cooking cup that I'll talk about in a little bit that usually goes on the outside of my bag. Uh, stuff like that. So, um, I also bring a, a pillowcase. So there's several ways of, you know, when you sleep at night, they have backpacking pillows and stuff like that that are inflatable. Mattress pads, sleeping pads too. They have all this inflatable stuff that, I don't know, for me personally, maybe it's gotten better over the years, but I, I, don't, I don't care for them. They're, they're loud, the ones that I've used. They make noise when you roll around on them, and they, they're just not that comfortable for me. I, I don't care for them. So what I do is I bring an empty pillowcase, and I just shove it full of my clothes. Uh, I shove my all my clothes in my pillowcase, or whatever I have that's soft, I just pack it full, and it's not the biggest, fluffiest pillow, but it's good enough for what I need, uh, and I, I do just fine with that. Um, so I always bring a pillowcase with me for that reason. Um, I also bring trash bags, and I bring two or three, maybe, but uh, two specifically. Uh, I use one for trash, obviously. Um, I, I have one bag that's actually for trash, and the other one I use for my dirty clothes. Uh, I put my dirty clothes in a separate trash bag um, just to keep them, you know, keep them away from other stuff. So, and then if you want to bring a third one, go ahead. Um, Ziploc bags as well for that kind of stuff. I bring Ziploc bags, not a bunch of them, you know, but they're nice to have for a couple of, you know, they're waterproof for one, so that's kind of nice and they don't take up room or weigh anything, so I don't really see much reason not to bring them. Uh, so I do that. Um, paracord, I have this, this big jumble mess right here that I've, over the years and trips, have sort of mangled up. Uh, maybe I'll do something with this or get a new one or something or just cut a section off it but I always bring at least some paracord you know maybe, maybe not this one in particular but I bring some paracord I, you know I can think of a lot of things that you could potentially use it for and that's a good enough reason for me to have it uh, the thing that I normally use it for is if I got to hang something from a tree if I'm gonna hang my my bag or or whatever if I want to hang my boots off the ground or for keeping scorpions out or something or Whatever, if I want to hang something from a tree, that's generally what I use it for. But, you know, there's probably a whole bunch of things out there. You know, I'm sure one of these days I'll, I'll use it for something else as well. Um, so I do bring some. Um, a lighter. I, you need some way of starting a fire. Even if where you're going doesn't allow fires, 
um, which is pretty common. Uh, even in some areas, allow fires, but just not over certain elevations. Uh, check check before you go what the, the rules and regulations are on that. Uh, if it's fire season, then obviously they're not going to let you have fires. But I would still recommend bringing a fire or some sort of reliable fire starter, no matter what, because. Well, you just never know. You know, if something goes wrong or something bad happens, you got to keep warm. You need to start a fire. Uh, you, they have magnesium sticks or flint or you know any of those kind of things that you could bring too, and I guess that's all right. Um, I bring a lighter because it's easy. It's, the, it, it's small and lightweight, and, and it's easy. It's the easiest way for me. So um, that's what I do, and I usually just you know make sure it works before you go. Um, a water bottle definitely bring a water bottle there's been I go through a lot of water personally I, I drink a lot I'm uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with so I'm you know when we talk about pack weight and stuff like that too I'll give you more of a example of this stuff but just so you guys are aware I'm about I'm about 6'6 225 pounds somewhere in there uh, so I go through a lot of water uh, I'm having a beer right now while I'm doing this but I drink a lot of water on the trail. Um, one or two water bottles. I, I hang this off my pack usually too. It's got this nice hook. I like that about this water bottle. It's got a good strong hook on it. I can hang it off a carabiner on my pack. Uh, it just sits there. It's also, it's real strong plastic. This one, you probably can't see it in the camera, but it's been, it's been beat to heck because over the years and trips I've, you know, you take a slide sometimes or something like that, or you put your bag down real hard and it hits a rock. This has been a great water bottle. It's nice, like I said, nice strong plastic. You don't have to worry about it. If it hits something, it's not gonna break on you because if your water bottle breaks, you're not gonna have any water. Um, so that's something that I would look for in a water bottle. Um, so bring that. But then you need a way to purify your water. So there are several ways and methods of doing that. Um, I've tried a lot of them. Um, there's this the life straw, which is pretty popular out there. A lot of people have these life straws. Um, there's a couple issues with the life. It, it doesn't weigh almost anything, so that's nice. But there are a couple issues with it. it it's, it's a straw, so you have to drink out of this. You can't just, you know, chug your water or whatever if you want to. Um, also, you have to suck the water through a filter. So it's, it's not like drinking out of a regular straw. You have to pull pretty hard on it to get the water through it. Um, it I mean, it works, obviously, but it, I'm, I'm not going to bring this. I'm just showing you guys to let you know. They also have these... Uh, purification tablets which I've tried these as well and I'll just tell you that these are not my preference um, for a couple of reasons what you know they're small and, and stuff and that's and that's great you know you save a lot of room in your bag but you know first and foremost they take a while to work they don't you know it's a half an hour or something like that before you can drink any water so if you're out of water uh, and you're thirsty you're gonna have to wait a while um, and so I, I don't know, I, my recommendation is, is not those. Um, so anyway, so what do you do then? So what I'm going to do this time, uh, one of the guys I went with last time had one of these style, you know, drop, drop a line in the water and, and pump into your bottle filters. Uh, so I just bought one. I haven't used it yet. Uh, I haven't used my own anyways, let's put it that way. I used his last trip and it was really nice. I, I liked it a lot. So it's got these quick fittings you put it like that it's got another one that comes out the other end up here <clears throat> you drop a line in the water put the other end in your bottle and you just pump it it filters the water um, so that's so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this this time and like I said I've, I've used his last time and it, it worked really well so I'm pretty excited to have my own this time it's it's very lightweight it's not the smallest thing out there it's got its own kind of bulky bag here but it doesn't weigh much and I think it'll be worth it, especially for, like I said, if you go through a lot of water like I do. Um, so that would be, that would be my recommendation on that. Um, something else, uh, cut, well, a few other things still. Um, I have this little, this is something I don't really use, but it was recommended to me when I first started backpacking and so I just got used to carrying it, honestly, but it's just a, it's like a body glide. They make it for men and women. It's a little tiny thing. It's like, it looks like a little deodorant stick, but you know, if you get a hot spot or something like that or start chafing somewhere, uh, you know, rub this over it and, and it 
kind of helps you, you know, slick it up a little bit. So hopefully it doesn't get any worse. So like I said, it's not something I usually, I, I really don't, I think I've only used it maybe one time, but I, I still bring it anyhow. Um, I do bring that. Um, wipes, uh, you know, remember there's no, no toilet paper or anything. And, and sometimes it's still nice to, you know, clean yourself up a bit, not, you know, not just your, your butt, but your body too. So if you get, you know, some days, you know, real bad or whatever, it's nice to take a wipe and clean your face and your arms off real, real fast. Uh, it's no shower, but, uh, it still can be pretty refreshing, you know, maybe before you go crawl in your sleeping bag or something. Um, pack these out with you though. Don't, don't leave them on the trail. They don't belong there. Um, they're trash and you always have to very rarely do you not, are there trash cans? You know, you're hiking generally miles and miles out into the forest or the woods or wherever you're going, and you know, there's no garbage out there. So uh, that's one of the other things. You know, so I said I have a trash bag for all my stuff. Uh, I might, you know, for some of the nastier stuff, I might put it in a Ziploc bag first, even and put it in a trash bag. Um, but so I bring some wipes. This is probably not enough. Maybe two of these little packs or something, uh, I think is what I would go with. Um, and so, and for cleanliness, speaking of that, uh, toothbrush, uh, I still want to brush my teeth. Uh, so I always bring a little, little travel, just a little travel kit, a little travel toothbrush, a little travel toothpaste. Uh, that's what I use. I stick those in my bag and keep my teeth clean. I've seen like the ultralight guys. I, I've actually seen people hike where they, they care so much about weight and I do too, but you know, but where they, I've actually seen, they take regular toothbrush and they, they cut it off. So. All you can really do is grab the end with just your fingers and, and get it in there because every tiny little gram of weight they, uh, they, they, they want to get rid of. So I don't get that crazy. I just get the travel stuff and I put it in my bag. Um, but <clears throat> that's, that's part of what they do. So let's see. I, I'm, only, I'm looking at the list to make sure I don't forget anything here. Like I said, I'll try and make this so you guys can print it too. Uh, I've constantly been updating it over the years. Um, so a light. Uh, a headlamp or a flashlight or something. I always preferred a headlamp over a flashlight. Um, but whatever, whatever you want, bring flashlight, headlamp. Um, I prefer the headlamp. I also, I always bring extra batteries too because if, if you don't, your batteries die unexpectedly or something like that. It's, you know, you don't want to be, well, now you can't hike at night you know, or you're going to have to use somebody else's light or something. Rather not do that. So I bring an extra set of batteries, a few AAAs, no big deal. Um, bug spray. Bugs can be more of an, if you haven't been out somewhere where the bugs are real bad, and I'm not just talking about the occasional fly or something, I mean bugs just all around you. It's it's pretty bad, it can be pretty bad sometimes. It's not, I don't underestimate, at least for me it is. I don't like it. I've been out in places where They've gotten, you know, I didn't have a, I didn't bring a head net on one trip up to the Redwoods, I remember, and uh, the bugs were just terrible. It was awful, and so without, I ended up just breaking off some pine branches and, and, and using them like fans, and so as I'm walking down the trail, I had these two pine boughs, and I'm just swatting and doing this for, yeah. So I do carry a head net. Um, it's actually, I didn't pull it out. Uh, I keep it in one of these little front one of these little front gizmos on my bag here it is it's in here it's uh it's all folded up in there a little tiny thing um but i wouldn't go cheap on that either because there's no reason to the cheap ones are like a, a dollar but for for 10 bucks you get a good one and the problem with the cheap ones is they're stiff and they're itchy and <coughs> just get a good one get one spend the 10 bucks or whatever at rei or something get one that's decent you can put it, your hat on put the bug net over your hat and that'll keep it away from your face a little bit and um, it's nice, but so I would recommend that, uh, carrying a, a, a head net and then also just some bug spray or bug wipes or, or something. But, um, I have, I, I bought this last time again, because I really don't like the bugs. Uh, this is called jungle juice. It's, it's 98.11% DEET. So it's, it's really, really intense bug spray. Um, that they have, you know, whatever kind you want, but I, some kind of bug spray, <coughs> excuse me. If you do get bit, if you start ending up with a bunch of mosquito bites or something, what I do, um, 
So I always bring this little first aid kit, right? It's just a small little cheapo thing. It's not a whole lot going on here. Um, but just basic stuff, some band-aids, some, you know, I think there's an ibuprofen in here if I, if I need it or, uh, you know, whatever comes in a typical little first aid kit is all I bring. But I do add some stuff to this. Um, I, it's not out here, but I bring a, a little uh, afterbite, a little tube of afterbite cream. So if you get bit or something, you got something to put on it. I also put uh, anti-diarrhea medicine in here. It's just little, they're tiny, tiny little pills. I just take the bottle and I just shake a few of them in there. So I got four or five of these things. Um, because your first aid kit's not gonna come with them by itself. At least none that I've ever seen. Um, and I, you know, knock on wood, haven't had to use one so far, but I'll, I'll be honest with everybody out there. I'm sort of notorious. I'm, I, please don't do this, but I have been known to just drink water out of the river with, you know, no filter, nothing like that. To me, if I use my judgment, if it, you know, if it's fast moving, clear water, I, I'll drink it sometimes. And, uh, that's not a good idea though. That's how you, you know, fortunately, again, knock on wood for me, I, I haven't had a problem, but you know, don't filter your water. It's the better, it's the better bet, but, uh, Drinking bad water is what's going to give you all that nasty stuff. So uh, don't put yourself in that position. Um, so back to first aid. So also blister care. Uh, if you get a hot spot on your foot or blister forming on the back of your ankle, pretty common stuff. Um, you should bring some some sort of a blister tape or something. This is a brand new. You know what I do? Actually, I don't have it. I'm going to step aside for one second here because I, what I do is. So I have a roll of this stuff that, uh, same thing I just showed you that came out of that box. It's just normal blister tape, but then I take a, a little bit of duct tape. I take a the big roll of duct tape and I pull a strip off a couple feet long, roll it up real small, tape it to itself basically, and then I throw a rubber band around it, make one edge open, and I shove it down in the middle of this thing because then it doesn't take up any extra room in my pack and this doesn't weigh it, it, nothing for you know all intents and purposes. It doesn't have any weight to it. And the only reason I do that is because I'm a guy, and duct tape is good. It fixes lots of things. So again, again, it's not something that I I've not used it yet, but I have it, and it makes me feel better that I have it. So that's what I do. I I, I bring that. Um, uh, all right, what else? So a knife. Or something some some sort of a knife is, or multi-tool or something like that uh, probably a good idea I always carry a knife I, I carry one actually that's overkill I'm sure you, you don't need something like this but I, I like it I just I think it's neat so I have this guy that and again and something else that I, I strap it onto my pack um, but I, I bring this and to be honest with you I use it for m mostly it's got a nice hammer end on it. So if I do use 10 stakes, uh, this is what I, for me, this is what I use to hammer the stakes in. But sometimes, honestly, I'll, I'll even just, as I'm walking down a trail or something, I'll pick up a branch or something and just kind of make a little walking stick or something. Just mess around with it. But um, if you don't carry something like that, I still recommend you carry something, some small knife or multi-tool multi or something. Um, definitely a good idea. Um, I have a can of bear spray. This is not something that I normally bring. Uh, in fact, I think I only brought it once with me. And I don't honestly think that I would carry it again unless I was in uh, maybe brown, <coughs> brown bear country. If I end up going somewhere where there's big brown bears that are, you know, real aggressive and stuff, uh, I'll probably bring it, make sure it's not expired. Um, but this trip that I'm going on in a couple weeks, it's bear country and the bears will be active, but it's 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 black bear, and uh, they tend to not be as aggressive, and you know they're they're just not as big and mean and scary as the as the brown bears or anything. So I'm probably not going to bring that. But if you're going somewhere that's you know a lot of bears and stuff like that, then you you might want to think about it. It might be a good idea. Um, I also bring a phone charger, 
because I do use my phone uh, when I'm out. Um, not for making calls or texting or anything, but I use it for uh, pictures, obviously, it's my, it's my camera. Some people, bring, if you have a good camera to bring, by all means bring it. I'm just, I'm not a photographer, I just like to take normal pictures. And so I, I bring a, char a little lightweight charger to, to charge my phone so I can take more pictures. And then I also use like an app, uh, the Gaia or Strava or something like that. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm kind of bad sometimes, I forget to turn the thing on when I start hiking. But if I do remember, I try to, and it's just kind of neat to keep track of your miles and elevation it, you know even without uh, cell service those apps the Gaia one at least still works and uh, they're pretty nice so um, this is this is my cup that I bring by the way um, and again like I said before it mine it's just a metal cup you can drink out of cook out of do all your cooking and stuff all my cooking happens in this pretty much unless it goes right over the fire um, I usually will put a strap through these handles and hang this off my pack, just like uh, a lot of other stuff. Um, I don't like trying to fit this thing down in there. Um, so speaking of that, a um, uh, little way to cook your food, a little, this is a little super lightweight mini stove. Uh, this is what I use to do all my cooking on. Comes out, it's got these little this, and this is not expensive either, by the way, and, and I've been using the same one on every trip I've taken, uh, and it's, it's always been good. And then a little can of fuel, this is like four ounces or something. Um, but whatever it is, this little size can, this, I used to bring a much bigger one or two of these, but I don't know if I just don't cook that much or what it is, but one of these brand new is enough to last me four days. Uh, I don't think I've ever gone through more than one of these in four days. Um, so you just screw your, Screw your thing on there, your little stove on there like that. It's got an igniter button on it. You turn the handle, open the gas, ignite it, put your cup full of water on there or whatever, and do your cooking. Uh, pour it into your food later. Um, so that's that's what I do for that. A little tiny stove, a little tiny can of fuel. Keep it small, keep it lightweight. That's the, the name of the game for all this stuff. Uh, I have a rain poncho here as well. This is... I don't really bring this, honestly. Uh, again, I have it. It, it. I I would bring this if I was going somewhere and I thought there was a chance I was going to get dumped on. Um, then I would throw this in my bag. Um, if, if that's not the case, if there's just a chance of some light rain or something, then my, my backpack has its own rain cover stuffed down in there somewhere in one of the bottom pockets uh, that it came with. So, and I have, you know, I have a hat and, and things like that. And I have a compressible jacket that I generally bring somewhere too that I uh, it's really nice it shoves up real small and yeah here so it's this right here and I'll bring this with me a lot and so it's it's lightweight but it's warm and it goes down to see it it crushes up super tiny um, so that that's all the rain protection I need unless I was going somewhere where it's gonna be a monsoon or something um, so I think that covers most of this stuff up here, uh, except my trekking poles. I like trekking poles. They're, they're nice. And, uh, I didn't used to use them, honestly. I, but I was on a training hike one time and I stumbled across one and it was just out in the, it was just out there and I just found it and it was beat up and someone had left it. And I, so I picked it up and I started using it. And ever since then, I was like, wow, these are actually really nice. And, glad I have it and so now I, I bought a these are not the best but they're not super cheap either uh, kind of mid-range ones the cheap ones are gonna be real heavy I, I wouldn't recommend them uh, spend they can be a little pricey I think for the good ones but you'll be happy when you're not you know carrying around a real heavy set of poles later um, so that's that um, my food so here's this is my my bear can um, this is required sometimes, depending on where you're going. Uh, the trip I'm taking in a couple weeks, this is a requirement. You have to have a bear can uh, for all your food. You can rent these if you don't want to buy one. I think they're about 80 bucks or 50 bucks. I don't remember actually. Uh, but they are available for rent most of the time uh, if you don't want to buy one. Um, and there's different kinds. The, there's another style that you might see if you go looking for them where it's like a clear plastic with like a black lid on it. And I'll just tell you, 
Uh, I've gone with guys who have had those in the past, and they're, they can be difficult to open. And I know that's part of the idea, because you don't want a bear being able to open it, but they're difficult for a person too. And there, there was some, there was some cussing trying to open that thing sometimes. So I would get this style. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Um, you open the top of these with a quarter. And so what I did this time, I put some Velcro on the side of mine and then I, I put, I taped the Velcro, or glued the Velcro onto a quarter. So I, I just, I have no idea if it's going to work, if it's going to stay there in my bag, maybe it will, maybe it won't. If it doesn't, whatever, then I just figure, so I put my knife in there or something, but so I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I got my quarter, you just go in here, undo these three little latches. And then I can just stick my quarter back on there, and then it's that easy. Opens right up. Um, I got most of my food that I'm going to bring in here. Freeze-dried meals, of course. I know a lot. These are pretty popular, like REI and stuff, the Alpine Air brand. And there's a bunch of different brands, but I honestly I like the Mountain House one. That's they're good. As far as I'm concerned, they're good. I like those. So I bring a few of those, I have one, for, one for every night anyways. I bring one of those for every night that I'm gone. Uh, they have other stuff. I found a little pizza thing that I figured, why not? Why not give it a shot? Um, and then they have breakfast ones too, and they're really not bad. Um, besides that, I haven't got everything in here yet because I'm still a couple weeks from going, but uh, I like my coffee in the morning, so <clears throat> I bring these little Starbucks makes them. I'm not a huge fan of Starbucks, but uh, these are convenient for camping, these little packets of instant coffee. So I just boil my water, pour one of these in there, mix it up, and I get some coffee in the morning. It makes me happy. Um, I also bring a bunch of beef sticks or jerky or something like that. Jerky's always good. Uh, I like these little beef, cheese, beef and cheese sticks. I bring some of those. Uh, oatmeal packets. I usually bring some oatmeal with me. Um, have that in the morning for breakfast sometimes. What else? Dehydrated fruit's a good choice. Uh, trail mix, I like trail mix. I, always, I make my own. Uh, I'll go to the store about a week before I go and you, know, you buy your trail mix if you want, or just nuts or something. Nuts are great, nuts are good good food to have with you. Uh, I make my own, I, I get a Tupperware and I go to the store and I just pick individual things and mix it up the way I like it. The only thing I'll say about trail mix though is relative to the other foods that, that I'm gonna be carrying, nuts are heavy. Uh, so I would just say be realistic about how much you think you're going to eat. Don't don't fill up a gallon freezer bag with with trail mix or cashews or something like that because it's going to weigh you down and you're going to end up wanting to feed it to the animals just to get it out of your pack. Um, salt packets. I bring some little salt packets like from a restaurant or something like that. Uh, salt is good if you're sweating a lot. You want to keep your sodium levels up. Uh, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a little salt packet. Um, I, you know, I don't overdo it, but once in a while I might take one of those and I'll dump it in my water bottle and just kind of shake it up in there a little bit just to, to have that, uh, that extra little sodium kick if I'm sweating real bad. Um, I, I also like hot sauce. So something else, you know, just for whatever, I, I, I just, I can eat hot sauce with anything. It's just the way I am. Uh, you can bring like little packets of condiments though if you want from from like a restaurant or something Taco Bell or something Just remember that you got to pack those out too. There's no garbage can So if you bring those little packets from a restaurant or something, you, you got to take the trash and keep it with you um, I also like to bring little tortillas. I, I met a guy who in Grand Canyon Who had those and I was jealous. I was like, oh, it's a really great idea. Um, I wouldn't recommend bringing bread or anything. It's probably gonna get smashed up, but you know, the little small tortillas <coughs> um, is a pretty good idea. So those are just some food ideas. Protein bars are, you know, real popular. A lot of people like protein bars. I, I bring one or two of them maybe, uh, any of that stuff. So um, that's it for uh, food stuff. I think we've, covered just about everything. There's some extra stuff that you can consider bringing if you want. Uh, some people bring little tiny pair of binoculars or, you know, a big camera or something like that. Uh, a hammock or, or like a hiking chair. I've seen people bringing those, but 
the hiking chair is as, as lightweight as you think it feels in the store. And it's weight and it's bulky and you know they collapse and feel lightweight when you're holding just that, but when you got one on your bag for eight miles, it's not small and lightweight anymore. I don't bother with it. You can actually, this makes a pretty good chair. It's strong enough to keep a grizzly bear out, so I, I hope it can support me. Uh, so I'll keep top on that, and I'll use that as a chair if I need to. Um, and hammocks, not everywhere allows hammocks. Grand Canyon's an uh, example of a place that doesn't. You can't bring them there. Uh, even though there's some trees uh, sometimes, you can't have a hammock there. You can't be tying stuff to the trees. So uh, if you're going to consider that, make sure that you're even allowed to use it before you go bringing that in there. Um, what else? A lot of people bring like selfie sticks. I've done it in the past. I, I, I'm not much of a photographer, but I brought one. It's kind of neat sometimes, I guess, be able to get some better shots of yourself if you don't, you know, if you're up to it. Um, the trekking poles, a GPS, if you want to bring a GPS, like I said, I just use the app on my phone or something, but you know, GPS is always available uh, out there. They make some really good ones. Some of them are not even like full blown GPS, they're just emergency things that you can just send a prearranged signal back to, you know, loved ones or something. And tell them, hey, I, you know, I reached my camp tonight, I'm okay. And uh, there's some good options for that if you want to look into it. Those are, you know, I, I don't have one, but they're, they're kind of neat. Um, let me just look through here. I think that, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, that's just some of the, some of the things that I've, learned uh and you know some of the, the the tips and stuff that i have from from my my trips out there exploring and i'm sure as i i keep doing it you know it'll it'll just keep uh keep evolving but that's the way it goes and uh, hopefully this helps i don't think i said this you gotta have a way to eat your food cheap little you know again you can plastic silverware from a restaurant or something that's fine too or whatever you want but this is Weightless spork. Got a fork on one end, my spoon on the other end, and uh, good to go. Um, that's it. The only last thing I'll say is regarding weight of your pack. I don't think I can stress this enough. I've I've seen guys start to set out with 50 pound bags, 60 pound bags. That's crazy. Unless you're a enormous beast or something like. But I'm I'm not gonna do that. I think a general rule of thumb is like 20% of your body weight. If you want my opinion, I wouldn't even go for that. I would do 15% of your body weight. I try and keep my packs around 30 pounds. Um, that's, that's where I, you know, I, I, you're just getting, you're just going to regret it later in my opinion, if you don't, um, but it's up to you pack as much as, or as little as you want. Um, some people can handle the, you know, 40, 50 pound bag. No problem all day long. Uh, it's, for me, it just makes it, uh, you know, I could do it and I have actually gone with the heavier packs, but it's not as much fun. Then I end up, I spend so much time on the trail after a few miles just tightening straps or readjusting the shoulder things on my backpack that it just, it becomes a nuisance and it just, it sort of kills some of the enjoyment uh, out of everything for me. So uh, I would, I would strongly suggest, you know, figure out whatever you weigh, 15% of your, your total body weight, shoot for that. Um, if you got to go over, then, you know, you go over it and, and hopefully it works out for you, uh, real well. Um, anyhow, I think that's, I think that's it. I don't, I think I've covered, uh, everything and, you know, hopefully for anybody that's getting out there for the first time or, or, you know, second or third time and just looking, you know, for, see how somebody else does it. Um, this is me and this is how I do it. This is how I camp and backpack, uh. I did not camp, I shouldn't say. I have three little girls and I just bought a pop-up trailer for me and them. So uh, they're, not, they're not quite at the backpacking level with me yet. Maybe someday. Um, anyways, that's it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this was good for you guys. Oh, hang on. I forgot. I always bring this. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a huge drinker or anything like that. But let me tell you what. It's nice when you get to camp at the end of the day and you got a little flat. I had a guy last last year or two years ago, though, I'll tell you this, that brought beer with him. And he brought, I think, three or four of these tall cans of beer. A mile into the trail, one of them 
pops a leak in his bag and he got a bunch of beer. And I would not recommend doing that. Uh, but a little flask like this, full of whiskey or whatever you want, it's nice at the end of the day. So I do bring that. And that wraps it up. Just like that, that wraps it all up.